It's been a marvelous study, and we are in just getting to chapter 30, so we've got a ways to go with the book of Isaiah. One of the things that um, I will share with you is that the, um, I, I hit the record this morning uh, for gas, $82 to fill, <laughs> fill the tank up. I thought, you have got to be kidding me. So um, I, I say that because, you know, you get to a certain area, and, and I know a lot within the church here are on fixed income. So um, we're going to take a look at some of the things that we, we do on a regular basis that we are really, really fruitful and, uh, and a blessing to us. And those things, especially with the summer months on us, that are not so much so fruitful and to maybe, um, can we lower that down just a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Or not so. In fact, I don't even know if I need that. Um, how's that? Good? That's what I thought. So, um, so we look at some of those things as well, especially with these summer months coming upon us. But there'll be more information coming out about that. Today, we have a marvelous blessing, and the blessing is this, that we, is Missionary Sunday. And on Mission Sunday, um, we always try, of course, to find somebody, whether local or serving abroad. And today, we are very blessed to have Israel and Julie Zalazar and Caleb and Eliana also with us, and they're serving in Argentina. And then we have Anita Held and her daughters, um, Bella and Chloe, so, uh, and serving in Zambia, Africa. You've met them, met them all before, but it's been a little while since we have heard from them. So we're gonna hear from them in just a little while. But in the meantime, Tori, would you open us in prayer and worship this morning? Father, thank you so much for this day that we get to come together and the, the warmth that we have. And Father, I just thank you that we get to just be a part of what you're doing and in, in how you're moving in, in the world and history right now. And, and I thank you for these people that are being your hands and feet and that you are using and that we get to hear from them and support them. And I just pray that you would bless them and bless this time as we worship you, Lord, that you would speak your truth to our hearts and your comfort and your peace and that we would just ascend into your presence and just enjoy being with you. Help us to lay our burdens at your feet and seek you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together.
It says in Ephesians, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may withstand in the evil day. That's Ephesians 6.13.
those last two songs, I can think of no better songs that represent our missionaries who will be on the Lord's side, certainly the missionaries, and that God would speak so that you should speak in a land where they have not yet known the gospel, as Paul said. He said, I'm going to go to a place where Jesus has not been named, and you have picked some places, some rough places to go, but God is speaking. He is speaking through you as missionaries, and you're on the Lord's side. God help this nation here of ours who needs missionaries in this place that God will speak through the church thank you for taking up the mantle and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and clothing yourselves in the full armor of God to go to a people that does not yet know him and we see from your correspondence is the mighty work that God is doing through your missions in Argentina and in Africa Argentina and in Africa. But for the church, what about America? What about America? Oh, that we would let God speak so that we can speak, that we would surrender to him. As we were singing, my eyes went to the word of God and I thought of Paul and Barnabas now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who's called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, God spoke. The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and set them off. We could replace the names of our missionaries who are here today with us in this word of God. God has called them. They never would have imagined, I'm sure, when they were the ages of Caleb and Eliana and Bella and Chloe, perhaps, that they would be where you are today. But God calls you, and you are a fruitful ministry to the glory of God. This morning, let's pray for our missionaries. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for how you have equipped these precious missionaries. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that has come to them, for their discipling, and now for their calling that they have gladly taken. We thank you for Israel and Julie. We thank you for the precious children that you've given to them and Caleb and Eliana, and not without struggles. And yet, Lord, you have been faithful. You have shown yourself to be the faithful God and through them, you are a mighty witness to the people of Argentina that the glorious and marvelous works of God are being declared there. For Anita and Bella and Chloe, to the people in Africa, you have equipped them to go there with the gospel message as well, not without trials in their own family. And Lord, to them, you have been so kind and gracious. And for our missionary families, the Zalazars and the Hells, oh God, how you have shown yourself to be the mighty God. And we thank you for the fruit that is born and has eternal value to it. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit that is being witnessed in these lands. But oh God, as we thank you for our missionaries who are sent to the uttermost parts of the world, you have raised up missionaries in your church to go and to preach the gospel to every creature, to make disciples of all the people groups, to baptize them in the name of the triune God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to teach them all that you have commanded, Jesus, and thank you that you are with us until the end of the age. Father, how I pray that your church would be a missionary church. 
that we would not just look to those who we have sent off with our blessings, but look to you first and foremost, to listen for you when you speak, just as the Spirit of God spoke then, so you speak now, to send us to where you would have us go. And now, Lord, you have simply chosen that First Baptist Church of South Glens Falls, we would bloom here where you have planted us. Lord, the world is in need of Jesus. He is the only one who could save this misbehaving and dying world, O oh God. And he only wants to bring that precious message of the gospel with power is your church. Raise us up again, Lord. Call us to repentance. Revive us again that we may truly go set free by the Son of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to do your work. This morning, Lord, I pray for our missionaries as they come forward. Lord, I pray that you will speak to them and speak through them. And you will give to us, Lord, who are listening, open minds ready to receive what is being said, hearts that will be changed to do your bidding for wherever you will call us. Father, how we pray you continue to set your hand upon the Zalazar family and the Held family as they minister to this people group that you have given to them. How we pray for your strength in their faith. We know that they're under your protection. But Lord, when the hard times come, strengthen them in the faith as they were taught. For they have been rooted and built up in Jesus. And Lord, now as they prepare to come after our beautiful music this morning from Evie, Lord, speak through them and let your church rise up to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
When will it end? Well, by the end of the service, perhaps you'll be dancing today. I don't know, but we'll see. Well, I wasn't sure if they were going to rock, paper, scissors or whatever, but um, so our first missionary guests this morning are the Zalazars, so Israel and Julie. I don't know if the kids want to come up too, but they're welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, we are glad to be, be here. And um, many of you know, uh, we are the Salazars, the pastor say already. And we want to give you an update what is God doing down there in Argentina through you and through us, you know. And also we want to say thank you for your prayers because um, many of you know, uh, Eliana was sick. And now it's fine, perfectly fine. And thank you, the Lord, for, you know, they do what they need to do. And we appreciate your prayer because God answered our prayer. Um, uh, como vamos a continuar, yo voy a seguir hablando en español. <laughs> Hello. Oh, there. <laughs> there you go. Um, as we continue, I am going to speak in Spanish. Um, y... Just because I feel more comfortable, I can express myself better, and my wife translates for me. <laughs> eh, la verdad que damos muchas gracias a Dios porque la iglesia ha ido creciendo. Uh... Um, we want to praise the Lord because um, the truth is that our church. And our ministry has really been growing over the last couple of years since we've been here. Proximo slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, it's not. Okay. Y, eh, como pueden ver, eh, cuando nosotros llegamos a la iglesia, había un grupo más o menos entre 20, 30 personas. Um, one of our main ministries has been um, the local church of El Círculo. And when we first got to this, we, we had made pop. Possibly we've talked about this in the past, but when we got there, it was a very small church of only about 20, 30 people. Y bueno, aunque no es que me gusta hablar de números. And it's not that I want to talk about just about numbers. Sino que el Señor le gusta la calidad. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but just, I'm sorry, go ahead and say what you said again. Um, eh, no simplemente me qui eh, quiero hablar de números, sino de calidad. Um, but I want to talk a lot about, um, not about numbers, but about quality. Y como decíamos, damos gracias a Dios porque la iglesia ha ido creciendo. And we praise the Lord because the church we've been working in um, has been growing. Uh, Próximo slide, please. Next slide. Eh, esto es lo que nosotros queremos ver. And uh, not just in number, but in, in spiritual, um, a lot of spiritual growth. And this is what we want to see. And this is what we are seeing. Eh, un poquito la historia de este matrimonio. Um, I want to just very briefly tell you about this couple that you see here in this picture. Al principio su hija venía eh, de 17 años, venía this, um, regularmente a la iglesia. Their 17-year-old daughter um, came regularly to our church. Y ella venía a todas las actividades, and she came to the majority of all our activities in our church. Y sus padres no querían saber nada. Um, but she came alone. Her parents um, wanted nothing to do si with the bien, church. Le daban permiso a ella para que fuera, pero ellos no querían saber They would give her nada. permission um, to come, but they wanted nothing to do with it. Eh, entonces dijimos, bueno. So we said, okay, well, you know, what should we do? We were praying for them, and we said, okay, well, you know, maybe we can start visiting them. Y dijo, bueno, está bien, los visitamos, pero bueno. And so we would start visiting them. Siempre and, pedía oración por ella y and, siempre orábamos por ellos. And she would always ask for prayer for them. We'd always be praying for them. 
hasta que vemos como Dios fue tocando su corazón. And little by little, the Lord started to soften their hearts. Vinieron a la iglesia, tomaron decisión um, por Cristo. They started coming to church every once in a while, and then they started coming regularly, and um, until the day they came to know Christ as their Savior. Ellos tomaron decisión de este paso de obediencia, de bautizarse. And Entonces, um, it was not too long after that that they made the decision to be baptized. And, y fue la, el segundo bautismo. Tuvimos un, un lindo grupo. And um, the Lord has done a lot. We had two baptisms in the space of one year. And, um, and not two people that got baptized, but two different baptism Sundays. And, um, ¿cuántos en total? Más o menos entre 12 and personas. And between, between the two baptisms, around 12, 12 to 15 people um, be, um, in total. Próximo slide. So, next slide. Y como dijimos, eh, si ni bien hemos crecido y hemos tenido que crecer en, en ministerios um, también. And as we grow, um, we've had to add new ministries to the church. Y esta es eh, la reunión de varones. And one of them has been kind of a men's fellowship. Y como ustedes siempre saben, la comida siempre tiene que estar entre medio. Um, there's always food, of course. <laughs> eh, no necesita traducción. <laughs> Pero sí estamos muy contentos de poder generar, inclusive hay algunos chicos jóvenes que están queriendo and venir, queriendo integrarse. Just, you know, older, you know, adult men, but also some of the men are starting to bring their teenage sons to come to the men's fellowship. Y es lindo poder ver cómo entre ellos se está armando una linda and relación. And it's just so nice to see um, the men getting together and forming just, um, you know, good relationships between the, diff between the men in our church. Próximo. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, one of the men in particular, um, just to share a little story about him. Um, you know, you should never give up praying for somebody. And even though it takes years and years, um, prayer works. And um, this man, his name is Javier, and his family, his wife and children, um, had been coming to our church for years, basically since we got there. And they had come to know Christ as their savior, and they were very uh, faithful and everything. And, but Javier did not come. And they were always praying for Javier. And he had no problem that his wife and his kids came to church, but he, he stayed out of it. And little by little, um, you know, the Lord began to, just like the other couple, began to soften Javier's heart until one day, one Sunday, he decided to come to church. And it just so happens, there's no coincidence with the Lord, but it just so happens that they shared the gospel in a very, um, very simple way and Javier came to know Christ as his savior. And if there's one person that I have just seen so, um, so plainly that the Lord has his hand on them, I would say it's Javier. Because literally since the day that he came to know Christ, he has hardly missed a church service. I mean, Wednesday night, um, Sunday, men's service, whenever um, there is needed to help out with something, um, there he is actually making sausages, homemade sausages that he was, um, he was selling, um, to help raise money for the church and everything. He and his wife won our Sunday school contest for basically perfect attendance. And um, so just another little personal story of, of one life that the Lord has really touched and has, is helping to grow. Next slide. Next. Um, you probably read in our prayer letter um, when we were here last time when the pandemic happened, um, very sadly and unexpectedly, our pastor, Pastor Celso Lozano, uh, passed away. Um, it was not COVID, it was an undiagnosed heart problem that he had, he, he passed away in his sleep. Um, but it just left a really a huge gaping hole in our church. And one of the areas that there was a hole left, I mean, so many different ways, he's um, been very, very missed, but one of the ways was in our music ministry. Um, our music, um, he, he basically was the music ministry. He had a guitar, our church is very simple. He had a guitar and he'd sit up there on the front row and he'd play the guitar and we'd sing to the guitar. And then he was gone. And so um, one of the things that we did is we had a lot of young people in our church. And we said, well, why don't we start a music ministry? And so the man who's standing there, um, so I guess it would be on your right, uh, who's standing there, my husband informs me that is not a guitar, that is a bass guitar. <laughs> um, he is a music professor from another church. And he agreed to come every Saturday morning and um, teach musical instruments to the kids and to the teenagers and 
I'm up there, so there's some adults up there too. Um, and so we started a worship team for the very first time. And even Caleb, you can barely see him, but he's, he's our drum player in our church. And so now all of a sudden we have a whole new avenue of ministry. And we're, and we're seeing the kids and the young people get involved in our church's um, worship service. And that's been a blessing. Next slide, please. Also, um, during 2021, I became the women's ministry leader. And um, that was a great time. We went through the book of Esther, um, and we had a great time. We had a lot of, we mentioned um, this, this one couple um, that came to know Christ as Savior. We saw several women come to know as, um, Christ as their Savior and to grow in a group. And, um, and so that's just been a real um, wonderful blessing. Next slide, please. Eh, como decíamos, eh, teníamos actividad, tenemos un buen grupo de niños y de actividades para ellos, pero nada para jóvenes. When we first got to this church, they had a very good children's program and lots of stuff for the adults, but we did not have a good youth program. Ese era un peso en mi corazón and that was something the Lord laid on my heart that was a need in our church. To have, no podíamos estar en, eh, involucrados en but I was so involved in so many other things, I could not be involved, involved in everything. Entonces, eh, Gracias a Dios pudimos comenzar el año pasado. But finally el, last year, praise the Lord, we were able to start a youth, um, a youth group. Eh, con ayuda de otra iglesia. Um, with the help of another church that already had a que, good que growing sus jóvenes, entonces, uh, youth group. Justamente estas reuniones están eh, juntos. They would come over like they are in this meeting and they would kind of help us out and kind of help us get our youth group started. Y gracias a Dios este año estamos comenzando and, a pulmón. Digamos. And now this year our church is completely on their own running our own youth group and we have people there from our own church that are, are taking the leadership Así of that. Así que pedimos oración por, por este, este grupo. So, ¿no? so de... pray for our, our young people. Y un poquito eh, la historia de César y Lucía. Eh... And I, um, another little personal story I wanted to tell you um, about this couple. Eh... Uh, this is César and Lucía. Eh, la iglesia se comenzó en su casa. Um, César, um, the, the church actually began in his home. The church was actually planted in his house. Y bueno, eh, como ustedes saben, la pandemia siempre afectó a todos. And en, as en you guys aspectos. know, if, if you think the pandemic really affected the economy here in the United States, imagine how it's been in other countries, and including Argentina. A lot of people were affected um, financially by the pandemic. Entonces nuestra misión decía, mira, hay, hay un cierto fondo que es para misioneros que necesiten para ayudar en cualquier aspecto, Ahí está este fondo. And so FIM said, okay, well we have a kind of like a Good Samaritan fund and that is going to be available to missionaries when they see, um, you know, physical needs of people in, in their areas of service, um, people who have needs, whether it's with food or medical supplies. And so they, um, they offered that to us. Entonces, eh, vimos, eh, preguntamos si podemos ayudar a ellos, ya que ellos estaban en todas las actividades. And so one of the ways we wanted to was we wanted to help these people because they're very involved in the church. They're pillars in the church and very involved in everything. Y cuando estaban en el ministerio, un ejemplo, si pedíamos pedir eh, que alguien pudiera leer. And one thing that we notice is like sometimes we would be in a meeting and we would say to Cesar Lucia, could you please read you know, this verse. Entonces, eh, tenían un par de anteojos. And we would notice that they had one pair of eyeglasses que, que la mitad roto. that was kind of, <laughs> that were kind of broken. Y, y lo compartían. And they would pass the eyeglasses back and forth between the two of them. <laughs> Ni siquiera era, eh, and it wasn't even not, it wasn't even the prescription for either one of them. It was just some glasses that they had gotten that they were using it ustedes, um, to see. Ustedes pueden ver sus caras de alegría después de tener and su propio anteojos y bueno, con su so we were able to use funds um, to be able to take them to the eye doctor and get them eyeglasses so that they can, they can read. Entonces, este, partes, pudimos eh, ayudar a personas eh, físicamente. So we were able to help with medical things, physical things. Next slide, please. Y también eh, entregándoles un ejemplo, ella es eh, Ana, es una viuda. And eh, also with um, things like groceries, like for example, this woman, um, she goes to our church, her name is Ana, she's a widow. Y le damos, le damos mercadería. We've been y able to go around and a, take um, gran mayoría de nuestra iglesia. boxes of food to a lot of people in our church. Some people out of our church um, as well. Pero porque lo que pasa es que la mayoría de nuestra gente en la iglesia um, a veces trabaja el día a día. The, uh, the good majority of the people, we don't really have any professionals in our church. Um, the majority of the people are people who, um, you know, they, they work day by day and like, you know, whatever they make that day is what they have to eat. You know, they don't, um, they're not 
you know, on a salary or anything. And, um, and so we have a lot of needs. Another one of our ministries that we try to um, continue, that was a little bit hard during the beginning of the pandemic, but now as things lightened up, we've been able to do, is the Ministry of Hospitality. Um, we want our home always to be a place where people can come, um, sometimes sharing a meal or coffee, or sometimes we'll have visiting pastors or missionaries come, and um, we'll give them a place to stay. And um, one thing that people have been very interested in is Thanksgiving. Um, that's something, an idea that's completely foreign to them. And I say Thanksgiving is not just an American holiday. It's any day to set aside to thank God for all their blessings. And so this was one group from a church up in Huhui, which is the, the province just north of us where we work a lot. Um, they came and they joined us for a Thanksgiving meal. And, and so being able to share that, and every year we try to have a different group of people um, for Thanksgiving um, to share with them. Um, so outside of our church, our church, our church is one of our main areas of ministry, but we have a lot of other areas of ministry too, particularly Israel. <clears throat> he will travel a lot um, to some of the smaller churches up in the more rural areas. And um, this is one of our churches that we have worked with a lot in Huhui. We talk a lot about Huhui. It's the province just about literally an hour north of us. So it's, it's, it's just right there. And um, this is a little church that we've showed pictures in the past that it started in somebody's backyard. Well, now they finally have their own property. And as you see, they have started to put walls around um, their property. Um, that's one of the first things you need to do in Argentina because there's a lot of squatters and, and everything. And um, so they have the walls up around, they have the walls of their church. They don't have the floor yet. They don't have the roof yet, but they've got the walls. And so this was, um, this is, I, I guess as missionaries, we're allowed to have our favorite churches. <laughs> this is one of our, our favorite churches. These people are so warm and, and welcoming. And um, this was their Good Friday service. And so we go up a lot into lots of little churches for um, sometimes just to visit for the day, sometimes to speak or give a, a seminar or a conference or something to go up there to kind of encourage all these little churches. Go to the next one. Um, sometimes we'll also um, in, join them for like a retreat. And this particular um, day, we have, were there, again, in Huhui um, at a little retreat up in the mountains. And um, we had a baptism, and Israel had the privilege of being um, able to, to baptize one of the girls that we met when she was younger, and now she's growing up in the Lord, and she made the decision to be baptized. So it's always a blessing to go and visit um, these little churches. You know, we go with the idea of blessing them, but they end up blessing us as well. Y bueno, este, como decía Julie, eh, no solo que estamos en la iglesia local, sino que viajo mucho. As Julie said, we're not just in our local church, we travel a lot. No sé si ustedes recuerdan de eh, tiempo atrás que les compartimos también que eh, la misión eh, bautista tiene un seminario eh, en Salta. I don't know if you remember where we um, said that the churches that we work with, they have a seminary in Salta, which is the city where we live in. Pero no todos pueden viajar. But not everybody can get to it because the churches are really spread out between Entonces, three provinces. Hubo un tiempo también que íbamos y compartíamos en distintas iglesias. And so what we would do in the beginning is we would go up and we would travel and we'd get together with a couple churches and we would um, try to bring some, some seminary courses up there to them. Entonces visitamos alumnos y de paso tiempo con los pastores. And so we would go up and we'd visit students and we'd, we'd pa you know, have some time with the pastors there as well. Pero últimamente decidimos, ya que habían varios pastores con la inquietud de si podíamos traer este seminario a... But eh, um, what, what we did Jujuy. in the last couple of years was that there were a lot of pastors that were saying, can you bring, like, can you bring the seminary up here to Jujuy? Y era medio difícil, pero And it was bueno, kind of hard. We said, okay, well, we'll see. Eh, llevamos la mitad. And we said, well, we can't bring the whole seminary up, but we can bring part of the seminary up Entonces, to you. Eh, justamente este, en, en julio estamos terminando la, la primer parte de un plan piloto que hicimos. And so this is what we did. And in July, uh, we will be finishing what kind of was our pilot program um, that we just started out. Um, y de dos años y medio. Where it's a two and a half year program. And they call it the seminary extension, um, the study center. Um, that is up in San Pedro de Jujuy, which is about an hour and a half north of us. Estoy con unos profesores y, y and so there I am with alumnos. some of um, our students and other professors that we go up there and we teach Mondays and Tuesday nights, right? Yeah. Yep, Mondays Solo and Tuesday días, nights. Um, and, and, they're, and they're in the evening because everybody's working and these are, you know, adults that are taking these, these courses. 
Otro ministerio que no pusimos fotos porque Another bueno, ministry no that we have that we couldn't we can't take photos there. <laughs> eh, es, eh, en, en el, el ministerio carcelario. Is prison ministry. Pero quisiera que estuvieran orando porque después But, de la pandemia se cerró este ministerio. Um, it was a ministry that we started out before the pandemic happened and then when the pandemic started they they shut the prisons and said we can't have visitors inside, you know, because of fear of, of, of a volver um, a abrir. Entonces, queremos algo, But queremos as things continuar. are slowly starting, they're a lot slower in Argentina to open up than they are here in the United States. But as things are starting to slowly open up, and we're hoping to continue ag again with this ministry of going into the prisons and sharing the gospel and also encouraging prisoners who've come to know Christ as their Savior. Así que eh, estamos muy, muy agradecidos y muy contentos porque... Eh, gracias a ustedes podemos ser partes, somos un buen equipo, creo. So, um, we're just very, very thankful. We're thankful for you guys because you are part of this ministry and, and thanks to you, to your support and your prayers, we can continue on in this ministry. And, um, si alguno quiere, después allá atrás tenemos... Um, este... Later on in the, in the fellowship time, come and talk with us and if you don't receive our prayer letter, you can, you can sign up for that and um, we just, we're happy that we can be here today and And, and share with you just a little bit, because there's so much more you could share, but just a little bit about what's been going on the last, um, last two and a half, or last two years, I would say. And I just wanted to echo what my husband said. Thank you so much for praying for Eliana. Um, she was, um, we had not planned to come as early as we did, um, but she was really sick with um, just chronic UTIs. And um, we had gotten a bad diagnosis in Argentina, and um, there were a lot of people that were praying for her, and we came back here to the United States, And um, she saw specialists here, and they can't find anything wrong with her. So we totally believe the Lord healed her. So, um, so thank you for praying for her, and continue to <laughs> continue to pray for us. Um, we've got a lot to to do between now, as the Lord wills. We like around the second week of August, we want to be returning to Argentina. So, um, so thank you, and and continue to pray for us. All right, God bless. So just one thing came to mind as I was listening, and that is go to where you are to where the people are. That's mission-minded. The people need this, they went there, they see the needs, and they go there. And that's what Christ has called us to do, is to be mission-minded, like we heard this morning from Pastor Israel and Julie, to go to wherever the people are. And sometimes it's not easy. Hey, move a seminary. But you know what? God does the things that he will do, and he will equip you to do those things, and he has. And so we thank you so much for bringing that blessing. Anita, family, if you come. So Anita is coming. Talk to us about their mission in Zambia. I will never say again. Yeah, yeah. Kids, come on. <laughs> this, this should be all set. Is it on? Thank you. <laughs> well, Mabuka Buti, it is so awesome to be here again. Um, the last time I was here, we were about to be headed out to Zambia. Um, I want to first thank you for all your prayers and all your support and for allowing me to be your hands and feet, me and the two little ones over there. <laughs> and um, it's so important. And it's so cool to be part of a mission-minded church because, like Pastor said, wherever you put your feet, that's where you've been called. And I think the mission field here in America is much tougher than anything I've experienced over in Africa, just being here the last two years. So my hats go off to all of you who are waging the warfare, spiritual warfare here, and just know that God sees you. And your sphere of influence, whatever that is in your home or in your workplace, you are needed. Don't ever shut that off. And just be that voice for Christ wherever he puts your feet, because we're all called to be missionaries. It doesn't matter where we are, that, that's where he puts you. And so um, we returned back to Zambia in October, and we uh, were planning on about six weeks. We got stuck in Africa, and I say stuck, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all, because I kind of enjoyed it, <laughs> um, for about four months. We had um, the Omicron variant, 
came out for COVID <laughs> and all the government buildings shut down and anybody who wasn't vaccinated and we weren't vaccinated, um, we had, I have a medical reason to not be vaccinated. So uh, anyone who wasn't for any reason vaccinated was not allowed into a government building, which prevented me from getting my permit renewed, which prevented us from traveling so, until further notice. So we didn't know if that would be for a week for six months, for a year, but we were ready to hunker down and, and just carry on. And I was actually excited, like I couldn't go anywhere, so I have to be here. And so the girls were excited. Um, it opened up awesome ministry opportunities for us. A lot of miracles happened in that time. Um, our permits have been a disaster, foreigners and permits are a disaster. There's a lot of corruption in Africa. Um, it took us, I've lived now, it's been 18 years in Africa, but um, prior to COVID it was 16 years. It takes um, 14 years to get a resident permit, so you're allowed to work in the country and live in the country. You have to maintain that permit by being in country six months. Um, you could leave, but you have to be back or they take that permit away and then you become a tourist again. Um, so to the, and it's thousands and thousands of dollars to get these permits and you have to jump through a lot of hoops. So we had our permits and we couldn't leave until the government could renew these permits. 10 years we were in a residential permit battle that we couldn't get through and it was jumping through hoops and hoops. And miraculously while we were there, the Lord hooked us up with a chief who was well known in all the kingdoms. He hooked us up with the president and under the president is the minister of home affairs and he got me a front row seat with him and he opened all the doors and everything flew open. I, we spent uh, almost nearly Christmas. We got into a taxi cab at 3 a.m. on Christmas Eve to make it home for Christmas and drove nine hours in a taxi cab to get home to be with our friends for Christmas. But that's only because the day before, after three weeks of being in the minister's office, immigration, everything was handed to us and they said, here's your permit, what we've been fighting for for 10 years. It was miraculous. It was just awesome. And then we had all this time. So what are we going to do? So we always had a women's conference with the expat community, all the foreign community. And we went out to Choma to this farming community and we had about 30 women who did not walk with the Lord or really know about the Lord. And we got to minister at a women's conference to them. And that is so powerful because all these foreigners hire between a dozen to hundreds of Zambian employ employees on their farms and tobacco farms and maize farms, all these farms, stevia farms, and if one gets saved, they minister to all of these Zambian people, and this is like so powerful. So we got to minister to these women. Um, we got to host, I had a missionary with us, and she was a housekeeper in New Hampshire, and we did a certification for our widows so they could have another job skill, and we certified all our women in um, housekeeping. Um, we got to do so much while we were there. Tons of Bible studies, tons of discipleship. We got to start to build up our mission again. Um, we did our Christmas outreach, which I told you about. We were packaging for 250 children shoe boxes of hygiene supplies, sweets, and goodies, and and um, supplies that they needed. And the missionary that was with me, it was 110 degrees. And we have aluminum, aluminum roofs, and there is no cooling system. <laughs> and we spent three and a half weeks buying supplies, packaging. My whole living room floor was covered, and we were throwing bags up in the air, and we were just covered with all these supplies that we were able to raise money for while we were in the States for these kids. And I found a butcher who gave us a great discount on hamburger patties, and 250 children for the first time had a hamburger. And their eyes just lit up and we did our Christmas program. They ate a feast. They were able to take food home. They got their shoe boxes. Bella and Chloe handed out 250 shoe boxes. It was just awesome to see. And these were the kids for all these years we've been feeding two meals a day to until um, COVID struck. And so we hadn't been able to build that back up again, but we were able to supply the Christmas program. And so um, I have a little video that you could see of this that I want to play real quick.
The feeding is probably one of my most favorite things that I did because we've been feeding these kids for decades and just to see the joy in their faces. And we called out each, and I had a list of all their names, and we called out every name to hand out a gift. And I, I know that doesn't sound like much, but there, it made them feel important and special and that they were known and God knew them and didn't forget about them. And so for me, that's like huge. Um, I'm gonna get a tissue. <laughs> you guys put it down here for me, thank you <laughs> for that. Um, I'm going to read on script because I'll probably start crying. Um, The time that followed was a very special time for us after this Christmas feeding. See, when my husband died and we evacuated back here um, after 16 years of ministry in Africa, um, I felt that the devil had really stolen the two years we were here. Ministry stopped. We just barely were able to maintain it alive (laughs) with a little bit of a heartbeat. Our lives were turned upside down, and uh, we really, I don't think anybody can really be prepared for that. But when we were told we couldn't leave Zambia, I got excited. I was like, oh, we get to stay, Lord. Like, are you bringing us back and restoring us? And he spoke to me, and he said, I'm restoring your timeline. He said, pray over the last two years. I'm restoring that back to you. And I got very excited in my spirit because the devil really stole that from us. That was a very real thing. And I began to pray for him to restore my timeline. And in an instant, things began to move. Our permits began to move. Ministry picked up. We brought on another widow for the Big Hippo Project that used to be with us, and she was so desperate and in such a dire need. And we brought her back, and we had enough funds to get a sewing machine for the Big Hippo Love Project. And the Lord said to my heart, expand. And I'm thinking, we could barely maintain. (laughs) And he said, then your vision isn't big enough. He said, expand. I'm restoring your timeline. And he began to restore things that the devil stole from us while we were there. I had a 1993 Prado Toyota. Toyota Prado, I don't know if anybody knows these little, it's a classic. We paid $14,000 for it 12 years ago. And it had 200,000 kilometers on it, and and it it was this rundown, and all the years we put money into ministry, we never put money into the car, but any time it had a breakdown, we threw money into that car. That car, rundown car, when I went, died, finally died, and I had put $25,000, that's the most expensive (laughs) rotten car, over the years, because we could never afford to fix it, so we fixed it bit by bit, here's a thousand, here's a thousand, just to keep it going. And even in that detail, because God knows, and you know on the mission field, you need transportation, because you're going where nobody has gone before, and it better be reliable, because, (laughs) and now my husband not here, if I have a breakdown, what am I going to do? And so I needed a vehicle, and even in that detail, the Lord came through, and some money from the Zambian government that they had corruptly withheld from me two years ago miraculously came into my account, and the Lord said, fix the car. I had $10,000 out of nowhere that the Zambian government gave me, which is like, (laughs) never happens. (laughs) I bet you can understand with Argentina. And the Lord said, restore the car back to the original make. Now, this is a classic. In the States, like if I could import that car to the States, somebody would give me $50,000 in the condition it was, because it's a classic, even rotten. And I'm like, ah, restore the car. I could not buy a car over there for that, for $10,000. I'd get another rotten problem, but I could restore it. And I called our mechanic up and said, this is my budget, can you fix the car? And it's in the process of complete restoration, paint overhaul, it looks like a brand new vehicle. And I remember getting upset because these missionaries came through and they had all the funding in the world, you know? And here I am and I'm just trying to get funding and I'm, we're just trudging along. And they had all the funding in the world and they had a brand new Land Cruiser. And they came up to me, and this is a tough spot for me because I've dumped all this money into Land Cruiser over the years and really struggled not to have a vehicle. And they're like, oh, we just, 
we got this from Adu, some Addis Ababa somewhere. And I'm like, oh, how much did you pay for that? That's beautiful. It's got a snorkel. It's shiny. You know, in Africa, that's like a big deal. And they said, oh, it, it, it didn't cost much. It was only $35,000. And I was like, Ugh. like, if I had $35,000. And now I can joke because my cruiser, when I get home, <laughs> also costs $35,000. And it's going to look just like his. <laughs> except mine has a little more heart value to it than that. But anyway, I, I only joke about that. Awesome for them. I, I think they're blessed, and I, that's incredible. But um, <laughs> on a side note, to the details, little details, God is in the midst of all of it. And he began to restore our timeline. We had a piece of land that we purchased 10 years ago for a lot of money that we were going to build a mission base on. And through corruption, the lands department never gave us a title deed. We were at the mercy of the government taking it away from us for the last 10 years. We put all this money in, so we started doing Farming God's Way and sowing the food into the community um, because we, never, we didn't want to build so that somebody could come and take it. But the vision was always there. And when I came back this time, a new president came in, and he got rid of all corruption in the country. And I went and applied for our title deed, and within days, the process has been started. And what couldn't move for 10 years in an instant just started to move. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm restoring your timeline. Now is the time. Expand. And so we'd always been feeding about 250 kids, two meals a day, all the time we were here. And he's like, expand. And I always had a heart for a thousand kids. And I always had a heart for a hundred widows sewing and creating jobs because that's 10 children to each woman and you know, times a hundred. Like, how many people can you reach? And he said, now's the time to expand, build. And I thought to myself, Lord, that sounds absolutely impossible. <laughs> in the situation I'm in, and my circumstances, it's impossible. And he said to me, that's perfect. Because the funny thing is, in impossibilities, then we know it can only be God. And only God gets the glory. So I got excited, and I did a little video of this piece of land I have just to show you and kind of cast the vision. I want to share it with you. So if you want to play that. God bless the range down in Africa. It's going to take some time to do the things we never had. We're in my uh, plot of land. We bought this in 2013, and it's been a long uh, several years we've been trying to get for this property but things just didn't work out and finally God has just provided our title deed for us so we have the clear head to go ahead and start building so since 2013 we had a vision to build a mission base and uh, in the meantime we've been using this property to do farming God's way and we've grown maize and green beans and butternut squash and every kind of vegetable you could possibly imagine. And we are helping feed the community and we are helping doing discipleship programs and fund um, school fees with the produce that we were selling. And so over the years, we've just been hanging on to this vision that we had for, for a mission base. And the time has finally come. In the past three months, we managed to push through and God provided our title deeds in the process right now as we speak. I have a blueprint right now made for the wall. Um, we currently have a fence that's already up that we've had up for years and a 5,000 liter water tank that we used for Farming God's Way. Come on in and I'll show you around. This is Francis and Donnie. They've been with our program. Donnie, how long? I've been, I've been, I've been working with the Invest the Grace Ministry for ever since I was 11. And uh, this time around, I'll be just looking forward to see how many life God is going to touch through this um, program, this um, ministry. Thank you. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah, Donnie's been with us since he's been just a little kid. And now he's all grown up and he's such an awesome part of our ministry. Um, our plan right now, uh, as you can see, we have a wire fence up. We have a 40 by 60 meter property. Um, it's being cleaned up right now at the moment. We've stopped farming. The last thing we farmed was onions. And now uh, we're looking to put a wall fence up. Uh, 
once the blueprint gets approved. So after I come back to the States, I'm gonna be fundraising for our mission base. And what that's gonna look like is a wall surrounding for security um, with electric fencing. Over here in this area, uh, we're building a house for Donnie, a small little house for Donnie. Um, he's gonna be doing our homeschooling while we're here with the kids. Hey kitty, say hi. <laughs> Donnie's actually a, a fully accredited a university graduate and he's a teacher and he is phenomenal. So um, he's really blessed us by wanting to do homeschooling for the girls and we're really excited about that amongst all the other things we do in ministry. So he just rocks. Anyway, a house for him will be over here. We're gonna move the big hippo love ladies container where the seamstress is so right along the side, right over here. Then if you turn over into this field over here, we're gonna be building our um, multi-purpose ministry house. And this is where we're gonna start doing feedings. Um, as everybody knows, I've been feeding 250 kids two meals a day for as many years as we can remember. But God gave me a vision to expand and my heart is to at minimum feed a thousand kids. So our vision is to now be a storehouse um, for other projects in the area that are doing feedings for kids that are just struggling and they can't afford to buy cooking oil, mealy meal, salt, sugar, all the basic dry goods. And we wanna be a storehouse for them and, and supply these feeding programs so we could reach more than 250 kids, we could reach a thousand kids. And so we're gonna build a multi-purpose ministry room where we can store all the food um, and even feed children from that area. It's also gonna be used for ministry and prayer ministry and also as the school rooms for the kids um, as well. So uh, that's really, really exciting. And then as you travel back down the plot, my plan is to build a small cottage for, the, um, for us to stay while we're here. And uh, it's just gonna be a little tiny cottage. Eventually I'd like to build a second one and then we have missionary housing on the other side. And so that's the vision at the moment and uh, it's gonna require a lot to do that. But our God is so awesome and he's so big. He, he's definitely gonna make a plan and make a way and we're so excited. I have so much excitement in my, my spirit now after all these years, title deed couldn't come out. It's out, it's like all green lights on. So I'm running full force with the Lord and waiting on him every step of the way. So we'd love for you guys to partner with us to help us um, build this dream and this vision that we've had since 2013, it's about time it comes to pass. And all the kids we're gonna help and all the widows we're gonna help and expanding the Big Hippo Love Project. And it's just, God is an awesome God. And there's so many awesome things that are about to happen. So I'm glad I could share this with you and that we could be a part of this vision together. I bless the race down in the microphone in Africa I just speak really loud <laughs> isn't it amazing that God isn't controlled by our circumstances but that God is in the midst of them and I think so often we get stuck in that place where our circumstances seem so out of control or so outrageous that we think we're no good for God how could God use me but in it he is using you as a testimony to somebody else that's about to walk through the same thing. And we need to stay the course. And so that's what the Lord showed me while I was in Africa. He said, let me be your husband. Let me provide, let me restore, let me give it back to you. And so often we want it in our timing, right? <laughs> and I think that's where we go wrong. We want it now. It's the Burger King drive-in. You know, I want it my way, any way, right now. And that's not how God works. And so he's transforming us and changing us into the image of his son. And he's chipping away and chiseling. And sometimes that's painful. But it's so necessary. And so... I want it, the Lord put on my heart to share something with you, which I'm going to get emotional about. So <laughs> it's a given. I'll try to do it through glasses and a microphone and some tissue. But when I was praying about coming today and speaking, the Lord gave me a word that I saw in Africa. Um, 
I was, I had all this time on my hands. I mean, we were really busy doing ministry, but at night I was alone and I had time on my hands. And I went through my husband's journals in his last days. And his Bible, his favorite Bible, he had like 30 of them. <laughs> Every version you can imagine, even ones you never knew existed. And um, consistently, he had a word written in, in the Bible, anablepo. And I'm like, it sounds goofy, you know? Like, that's weird, is that a girl's name or something? Like, what, what is this? And I, I Googled it, and it's Greek. And it's in the Bible 27 times. It means this. Look up to heaven and receive true sight. Look up to heaven and receive true sight. It's in the Bible 27 times. Anna Bleppo. Before my husband died, he, had, he was a German, very passionate German, very excitable, always in your face German. And uh, he, he used to get these revelations from God. And he wouldn't share the whole revelation with you until he had the full revelation himself. But he'd drop little hints, little teasers. And he'd mention things, and then I'd be like, tell me more. And he's like, no, 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 you're not ready yet. I'll tell you when I got it. And he, he did this before he died to me. And I used to, like, let it go. And then a year later, he's, he'd be like, you remember that thing I told you? I, and, yeah. And so I just let it go this time. And he's like, 2020. It was 2019. It was December. He died in January 2020. And in December, he said, I have a new revelation. 2020 is the year of proper perspective, perfect vision. And I started to giggle, and I'm like, this is so cheesy, because the whole of Africa, all the churches picked a theme in December to run with. Everybody's got perfect vision, and 2020, perfect, you know. And, and I'm like, oh, no, don't tell me that's the word the Lord gets. Right, okay. And I kind of blew it off, and he's like, no. Perfect perspective. You know, I didn't, only a month later did I know how right he was. I want to share a story with you about proper perspective. I'm going to have to read it off of here or I won't get through. So here I go. Jesus. When my husband died, the Lord allowed me to see through heaven's eyes briefly, and it began at the funeral. The Lord spoke to me, and over the course of three nights gave me the entire message, and he said, you will deliver the message. I don't know if any of you can imagine what kind of burden that must have felt like to the widow, but something miraculous happened. The Lord gave me the entire message for the service, and in the instant when it was finished, and I had, done, had been finished writing it down, and I read it to myself, my eyes were open, and I saw through God's perspective, overriding my own perspective, as if somebody completely changed my eyes. He said to me, I should rejoice. I was not going to a funeral. I was going to a wedding. I was the one he chose to hand my husband over to the bridegroom, Jesus. Suddenly, in my spirit and my emotions, I became incredibly excited. It made no sense. I remember I awoke the day of the service like a bride, getting ready for her wedding day in all excitement. I colored my hair that day. I shaved my legs, put on makeup, and I put the dress I wore to our wedding celebration 12 years earlier, and it still fit. My house was filled with visitors and friends and disciples, all quiet, solemn, and sad. But I walked out all dressed up, filled with exuberant joy. I couldn't wait to get to the service and worship. They all thought I had lost my mind. I arrived, and I began to joyously hug as many people 
as I could. And I'm a hugger, don't get that wrong, but my husband was an uncomfortable hugger. He went into your space bubble and stayed there for a while. You know, you know what that feels like? And it drove me crazy. And there I was in everyone's space bubble, embracing them and looking deep into their eyes like he would. And I couldn't stop. But when they looked back at me, something miraculous happened. I didn't see their eyes. I saw my husband's eyes. He had radical, ice blue eyes. And every person I looked at had his eyes staring deep into me. And I knew I was staring into heaven. Around 300 people attended that day. My husband had an evangelist anointing. And he ministered to every person he could from all walks of life. He flew a microlight and he, mini- he called it his flying pulpit. He ministered to 28,000 passengers for 15 minutes each time. And he never missed one. Everyone in town, irrespective of their religion, he ministered to Satanists, to Buddhists, to Hindus, to atheists. He did not care who you were. He was going to get in your space bubble and share the truth. That was his life mission every second he got. And the funny thing is, being kind of odd like that, you would think he'd really offend people, you know? If I did it, I would totally be offending people. (laughs) Everyone loved him. He offended no one. And they were all there that day. They were all brokenhearted, and none of them were prepared for my my message. The Lord told me that their stony hearts would crack open just enough to spark a flame that day. He told me to deliver the message, and he would fan, fan the flame. At the end of service, I had 300 people with hands raised to heaven to the Lord, And they all prayed and gave their life, hopefully, at least from what I saw to the Lord. And in that moment, I knew my husband's mission was complete on this earth. And my spirit radically rejoiced. My girls and I then threw flowers down a 200-meter dirt path to Daddy's burial, where we had the honor to hand him to Jesus. I asked Bella that night how her day was, because I was concerned. And she said, Mommy, it was the best day of my life. My heart feels happy. (sighs) You see, that was Anna Bleppo, proper perspective. For one to look up to heaven and truly see from God's perspective, not our own, what a gift. So I sit here with my two little girls and the vision so much bigger than the three of us. But I know nothing is impossible with God. So instead of questioning how this will happen, I choose to rejoice and thank him for the miracle in advance. Because what my earthly eyes see matter little to what God truly sees. Today, God put it on my heart to leave each of you with the same gift. The gift of anablepo, and I hope I'm saying that Greek word right and I'm not slaughtering it, but the next time you see sickness, Christ sees an opportunity for healing. When we see a funeral, he sees a wedding. When we see the impossible laid out before us, he sees the path that only he can lead the way to and no one else can see but him. I ask that today your eyes would be opened to see from God's perspective, not your own. Not your circumstances, your fear, the voices that tell you you're not good enough or there's no way. But that you may see anablepo and look up to heaven and receive God's eyesight. He is the God of impossibles and he has a plan for each of our lives. You, me, it doesn't matter that I'm a missionary over in Africa or if they're in Argentina. 
whatever dream God put in your heart, he put it there. It was him. So often we think we have to do it, when in truth, we need to trust and walk in faith through the circumstances while he does it. So I pray that you allow God to change your perspective today in whatever circumstance you're walking through and whatever it is he's calling you to do, no matter how big or small that vision is. May you have an oblepo vision. Look to heaven and see through his eyes and see that the world looks completely different. I just want to pray for everybody. Is that okay? I'm to dry up. <laughs> Father God, you're such an awesome God. And in the midst of our circumstances, big and small, all the challenges, every arrow that the enemy shoots at us because he's the father of lies, and if he could keep us from the truth, your truth, and from your vision, then he thinks he won. But God, you are the victor, and you have victory. And we know who we are in you. And though the battle may be raging, and the war may be on, we stand victoriously while you do the battle. So Father, help everyone here stand in their battle today and move victoriously forward in your vision and in your calling, wherever that may be, wherever they set their feet. And, and may their, their circumference expand. May there be expansion in this church, expansion in outreach, expansion in ministry, expansion in missions. May you just expand. When it looks like nothing's moving, you are moving. So thank you for being in the midst of us, Father God. And I, I pray that anointing over every single person in here today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, whether Anita knew it or not, but one of the things that I think we also fail to do is we don't embrace God's grace. But when you embrace his grace, look what happens. And there's your ministry, embracing the grace. And the proper perspective is to see it through God's eyes. And from the beginning of the Bible, we can see he's speaking of three things. He's speaking of land, he's speaking of seed, and he's speaking of covenant. We see that all the way through, of land and of seed and of covenant. He's made his covenant with his church through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And even it said to Abraham, you can't count. They are as the sand on the seashore. That's how far your seed will be. Go to a land that I will show you. He has sent the Zalazars and the Hells to a land that he has shown to them and whether it be through the <clears throat> trials with Eliana or the trials in Africa and the government over there in corruption God's word is true he says I will redeem the years that the locusts have eaten away we still get older he doesn't give us our those but he does give us time he does give us time to be faithful to him and he will redeem what has been supposedly eaten away. But when it comes back like a burned landscape, the forest is more lush than ever when we look to him, what his perspective is. So thank you to the Zalazars and to the hell for coming and sharing the Lord's work in your lives. We are truly blessed to have you as missionaries here. And the world is truly blessed to have you as missionaries to them. Thank you for honoring the Lord and bringing him all the glory that is due him. One thing I will say, the church needs more Javiars. I mean, we need guys cooking sausage in the church. And, and it's, it's, there's a theme there, hamburgers too. I mean, come on, huh? Hamburgers and sausage, we don't have that. But there is a reception 
So um, please enjoy the reception out there. If Javier was here, we, we'd have sausage and peppers with it too and some onions. But anyway, he's not. But, but tell him uh, I love him just for that. Um, and of course, there'll be plenty of time to ask questions. And please visit both of the, uh, the sites out there to take a look. And, and please ask them questions. And as always, while we as a church support them corporately, we also can support them individually. And so, um, you know, we don't have to say, Pastor, can I support? You can, of course we can. We can support them as individuals. And, um, and you certainly have our blessing to continue to support you as missionaries, as the corporate body of Christ here. Tori, would you lead us in music? Immeasurably, above all that we can ask or imagine, according to the power that works within us, be glory in the church and Christ Jesus through all generations. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's eat. <laughs> 